Rightmove had 2.3 billion visits in 2022, but how many of you know how to use it? So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down how to actually use Rightmove properly, how to set your criteria, the simple parts of Rightmove you may already know, but I want to make sure to cover it, and some advanced features you may not know about. So let's break into the criteria. So first of all, I want to talk about location criteria. So I think this is a really helpful tool. Once you set up an account on Rightmove, you can actually draw a search. So for example, if I go into Leeds, or actually anywhere near, Leeds is my preferred area because I just think it's got one of the best investment areas in the UK right now. So when we get to Leeds, I might go to the South Bank development area, which is all around here, and I'll draw this line out. So as you can see, this is more of just an example. If I draw that there and I'll go South Bank Development, save the area, and then what will happen is I can click that View Properties list and everything will come up. So as you can see, it's developed all of these and you can see all of these dots which represent a house. Now I've either I can click on each one or I can just click List View, which I prefer, and then I can start going down there. So it's really important to start with your area because ultimately that's going to understand what you're truly looking for in location um, in terms of your demographics and things like that. Now what you can also use is I prefer using property data. There's a free trial right now, by the way, I'll put a link in the comments or the description so you can check that out. But if not, and you want to use something that's ultimately free, you can use something called Street Check. So street check is all based on the electoral roll and land registry data. So let's say I was looking at one of those South Bank developments, let's say um, LS10 1PT, which is uh, one of the blocks of flats near Hunslet in Chadwick Street. But what you can look at here is you can see a summary of the area, housing in the area, so you can see the breakdown. This is a heavily dense, uh, densely populated flat area. Whereas if I went to, let's say, LS42 JU, which is... Haddon Place in Burley. Again, this is mainly uh, terrace properties, as you can see. So it's good to understand the makeup of the area. You want to look at the people of the area. So you've got A, B grade, etc. And all of this tells you that. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. The ethnic groups doesn't really impact you in most areas. Employment's a really important one. You want to make sure people are actually working in the area. And then, of course, there's crime in the area. Now, one thing I'm going to say is there's crime in absolutely every area, hundreds of crimes per 1,000 people. So when you look at your area, don't be shocked. Number one theft areas tend to be in student locations. Why do you think that is? Well, it's because where else are you going to find a house often left unlocked with five iPads, five laptops and TVs in every single room? Nice uh, little haul for a thief, right? So don't be shocked if you're looking at the crime. The next thing is you want to get an idea of house prices in the area. So you've got rightmove.co.uk forward slash house dash prices. And again, this is the tab I've got open now. So again, if I search that same area, LS42JU, immediately I can see the house is sold in the area. And it gives me a really good indication. So I can play array around with a filter of location in terms of mileage away from that, when it was last sold, all of the property types and things like that. And then finally, you might not know this, but Rightmove actually has a load of guides. So these are landlord guides around managing your property, finding tenants, a buy to let guide on buying property to actually rent out, what to look out for on viewings, etc. how to beat the crowd. And I think it's really powerful. And most people don't actually know about this. But as you can see on these guides, there's guides for buyers, sellers, renters, landlords, students, energy savings, safety and security and accessibility. So take advantage of it all. You need to understand what you are actually looking for. That's the criteria. Let's get into some basics of what you should look for when searching for a property. So let's just cover the basics very quickly. So when we're going through this, you've got buy, rent, house prices, find agent, commercial, inspire, which we don't need to look for, uh, and overseas. So we're going to go to buy, property for sale, and I'll give you some general guidance on this. So let's say I was looking at LS4 as a general uh, area, which is the Kirk store and Burley area of Leeds. So first of all, we're going to have a postcode. If you're just using the front part of the postcode, LS4, then you can just go for that area. 
but you want to set some price ranges. So in my area, for example, I'm looking for 80 to about 150,000. And my personal opinion is I do, I only buy houses and only two to four beds, sometimes a five bed, but hardly ever a one bed. Okay. So I'm going to go for houses, add it to the site anytime. And I'll probably include subject to offer, uh, sorry, under offer or sold subject to offer. And the reason for that is even if it's agreed, I actually just want to make sure I'm getting the, um, the best opportunities. So when I'm searching this, only one property comes up and that's because of my price range there. So for example, if I increase that to 200, you'll see it will come up with this. So let's sort it by lowest price. And the first thing I want to do is go over to filters over the right hand side. The reason for this is there's certain things I don't want. For example, I don't want new homes. I strongly recommend against buying new build or off-plan properties. Off-plan properties are almost always a terrible investment. Terrible investment, by the way. So terrible investment. And why are they terrible investment? Well, overinflated prices, you've got movement in the properties, they're over-enhanced and like, we don't pay you a fee up front, but they're making 40 grand in the back end. All right. I don't want a retirement home because I want to think about the exit and I don't really, I'm not interested in buying schemes. Okay. You might look at must haves, but personally, I don't really care about any of those things. So I'm going to click done. That narrows it to 15 properties. You click on the properties and the first thing I do is a quick flick through the photos. The reason for this is because if you already know that you want a property that is already done up it's already to let then and you look at the pics and it's like that's going to need 20 30 grand there's no point looking at it move on okay so quick flick through here i think it's an okay standard on this property that's rentable as is but probably will need to look at the electrics and the gas the next thing i'm going to be looking at as i'm scrolling down is the floor plan and for me, it's just to get some spatial ideas. So with this property, there's not a huge amount you can do being over uh, four floors. However, sometimes you can look at it, say that bedroom, for example, on the first floor, and you're like, well, actually, it's got two different access points in there. Could you put a hallway there so it's stair to stair? And could I split that into two rooms? Because at the moment, this particular property is a two bed, but I know in the area, if that went to a three bed, it would probably add about £30,000 to the value. So it's a very nice way to add an extra 30 grand to the value of the property with very little input. So next thing I'm going to do is don't really care about the description. Maybe I'll quickly look at it, see if it needs to be cash or not. Don't care about the brochure. It's the energy performance certificate. So the EPC I'm going to be looking at, it's a D at the moment, which isn't a problem. Does it have the ability to get to a C? Yes, it does. That's all I really care about. The other thing is it will often tell you the square footage of the property. So you can see going through this, there's a lot of information. This is just the basics of it, okay? Then what we're gonna do, stations and schools, as I met, recommended earlier, and a really big one nowadays is broadband speed. So check out the broadband speed, you're just gonna click that there, and it shows you it's got over one gig of capability. And that really is the basics of it. The final cool tip with this is the property sale history. So you can see the sale history there. So you can see massive capital growth in the area. 2001, it was 60 grand, 2005, 115,000. And again, that's a 92% capital growth. And then now, where are we? 2023, 155,000. So again, it's gone up another 50% in that period. So it drives and it drives and it drives. And then you can look at similar properties here, which is a really good indication of what end value of the property you can get to. So let's get into some advanced stuff. So number one thing I like is the price comparison metric. So I mentioned earlier that you can do that in the simple thing when you're scrolling down on a property, but you can actually do it with this where you just put in the postcode and it brings up absolutely everything that's currently on the market when it was added, if it sold subject to contracts, and it just gives you a holistic picture of what we're looking at. Next is this where can I live tab. So the where can I live tab, is really cool. It's usually used for home buyers, the people that want to live in the property. But why not use this as an investor if you think about your end customer, right? So what you can do is I won't go through the whole thing, but you can go on your budget, put in your criteria 
and things you want to live near, like I want to be within a five minute walk of a train station. I want to be within a 10 minute walk of a good or outstanding school, all of those things. And it will narrow your investment area. And finally, it's not that advanced for right move, but how you use it is really key because really once they're on right move, it's gone to a lot of different people. Some estate agents, they'll look at it buying themselves. Maybe their mate wants to buy it. They'll talk to the vendor about different options and exits through options. Uh, auctions and then they're listing it okay so by the time it's got there it's really unlikely to be an amazing deal so you need to get off market properties so how do we do that well you search for the estate agent so again if I go for LS4 plus half a uh, half a mile and I'm looking for sales and lettings I've then got a list of agents that are doing properties in that area. Now, again, if I just limited that to sales, which brings it down to six people, Castle Hill, Fletcher, Hardesty, Manning State, and Manning State in Lux, and SB Living. What I can then do is I would search each of them on LinkedIn, find who the valuers are, not the sales negotiators, because remember, the valuers are the ones that close the deals, reach out to them, build a relationship, and get the properties off market. If you've made it this far, it's very likely that you want to actively invest in property. And if that is you, great news, that's what we do for people. So my main company is Aspire Property Group. And if you like the idea of getting in property, but you've got the money, say 50 grand to invest or more, you want to build your portfolio, but you don't have the time. You don't have time to be calling those agents. And really, you want to get direct to vendor off market deals, then that's what we do. We'll build your entire portfolio for you. And what we're doing right now is opening up a selection of free spaces just so we can have a one to one consultation call. Understand where you're at, where you want to get to and if we can help you. And if you want access to one of those free slots, put APG in the comments. If not, I'll put a link where you can click on it, fill in your details and we'll be having a chat with you soon. So right move is one of my favorite tools to be using out there if you are going to go on the market. As I said, I prefer off market and direct to vendor. But what's your favorite tool? Let me know in the comments. If you got value from this, make sure to hit the like button. It really helps the channel grow. And of course, if you're new to this and you want to find out more about property investment, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And if there's any particular videos you want me to make, this channel is about you. So let me know in the comments and I'll get it done.